Okay, good morning. It is morning, it's not middle of the night. Yesterday, I put myself in a vulnerable situation on Mrs. Rider Guider's XT250 and I had what I'd class as a near miss. And I was in this situation here. We've got a four lane freeway and it's an 80 kilometre an hour road. And as you can see, people are slowing down going down the hill. And what happens is, it's, as you can see, it's quite busy. And I've got this exact same situation now. And I'm going to indicate and move out because what's happening is slow moving vehicles in the left hand lane. They've got a truck there. Now that's not what happened yesterday. That poor bloke's right with that. Now, I'm actually going to stay in this lane now because look further down, you can see everybody's on the brakes. Nobody is hardly using their gearbox to slow down. So all you get is bright lights, bright lights, bright lights, and no change when they the brake when they slow down even further. When they press their brake pedals more, there's no or hardly any illuminatory increase, if that's the right word. So you get hardly any warning that somebody's slowing down. So what happened was, as I should be, some two kilometres before this left-hand turn, in the left-hand lane, unless overtaking. However, as you can see there, did you see them on the road? You might not have been able to see it, but left lane is left only, it goes off. This lane goes straight on and left. What we had is a situation where I was in the left hand lane, it was very busy, and I was unable to get across too easily. I was gonna, I would have managed it, but I wanted to get across earlier, but I couldn't, but I was indicator on, waiting for a space where I could move across, and somebody was in the left hand lane, blocking a white car, rather than go straight on, he wanted to come out. He stopped, right in the left hand lane. And every car behind on a road like this had to come to a stop, including me in that left hand lane at the back. Now, you probably have got there, of course, with a motorcyclist. Because I wasn't able to get across because it was suddenly, as I'm slowing, there's cars in my right shoulder doing 50 k's an hour faster than me. I was able, unable to change lanes. The option was to stop my vulnerability, if I'd have been quick enough to think about it, was maybe go left onto the hard shoulder. Because I was sat there for probably five, six, seven seconds with cars behind coming to a stop on the freeway. And I was like, I could get it up the arse here. I'm going to get it up the arse and I was shitting myself. How could I have changed that? How could I have put myself in less of a situation? It was a near miss for me. You get him? That dickhead's like this here without any lights on. Why have you got no lights on? I wonder how far they've ridden. Got them driving lights, but no back lights. Um. I could have got out earlier, like I just did then. Um, the problem you've got is, you've got to boss your place. I didn't boss my place, I didn't get out early enough, and I left myself vulnerable to a rear ender. And a lot of people were coming up behind me, and everybody had stopped, everybody was on the brakes, and I was like, ooh, this is a bit dangerous. So I was sat there with my ring, pulsating for a short while. It was a bit of a moment and it, and it looked, everybody behind had seen what had happened as well and everybody was stopping but all it takes is for somebody just to be for even a, a, a fifth of a second. That's all it takes for them just to take their eye off what's happening in front. It was just a fifth of a second. That human error. And I'm an XT250 sandwich. very annoyed at myself for putting myself in that situation because I hadn't really bossed my place I hadn't put myself 
out into the outer lane, well, lane two, three or four, if you like, way beforehand. Just something to think about. Could have been a lot worse than what it was. Nobody got, nobody collided, but the bloke in the left-hand lane, it was a bloke in a white car, because then he proceeded, when he did eventually get a gap, having stopped on the freeway, got out and then just sat in lane three with nobody around him. Nobody on his inside, nobody on his outside, and went basically 10, 20 k's an hour below the speed limit. It was a bit of a confused motorist. They are out there, and he nearly caused a serious accident behind him, or it could have done, and he wouldn't have been any the wiser, because he'd have just set off. He stopped in the left-hand lane. So what did I learn from that? Quite a bit. Um, I'm not perfect. Never stop learning. And that's probably why I enjoy doing what I do with the channel and the defensive riding. I, I'm, I'm not crap, um, but I wasn't good that morning. I didn't predict traffic behaviour. I didn't predict... Who would, actually? I'm honest with myself, who would predict somebody stopping in the first lane, the four lane carriageway, just because they needed lane three, two or four, um, rather than go straight on in a lane where he had to go off left, he just decided to stop. Everybody doing 50 mile an hour, and he just decided to hit the brakes and stop in that left lane, and left everybody behind him coming to a stop. And I've been, everybody was hitting the brakes pretty quick and not even realising it caused a real concertina effect because everybody was on the brakes already because they were coming down the hill and it left everybody with not much braking space including me I have to say uh, it had been dark for a while and the brake lights had been on all the way down from everybody and left less space I was as soon as I was slowing down I was very aware of crapping myself I thought hang on a minute who's behind me here how close are they because it's hard when you've got mirrors and you don't know how there's lights everywhere behind you. You don't know how close that guy is behind you or that truck or whatever. So I was lucky that I wasn't shunted up the ass. And I was looking in the right lane all the time. I was trying to find a gap. And I was sat there for about five or six seconds and I couldn't get one of those cars. Ding, ding, ding. To the extent I thought, you know what? I should go left. Just hide. Get down the, um, the, the hard shoulder. Just even just by a car or two, two car widths. Just to put myself in less of a position. I was for a few moments I was the only car there and I knew as well after the car behind me or the truck and it was a white van behind me he pulled up behind me and he was people were still capable of shunting him into me so I was still vulnerable luckily it was only for a few seconds I think and I didn't film it but I could have just I was so relieved to get moving again and I'm annoyed at myself uh, I've said this before you've got to predict Traffic behaviour, but sometimes you just can't predict bad decisions from people. I mean, it was a crazy thing to do for the guy to stop, but he did. I didn't predict what had gone on, and it reminds me a little bit about a, a video I did not long ago about if you get hit, it's your own fault, and it created a little bit of... Hey, a lot of people have followed it up and gone, that's nah, not fair. Oh, one person is Pete, thanks for that comment, and I'm still not replying to you. Maybe this is a good enough opportunity to explain my thinking. It isn't my fault if I get up the arse. It isn't my fault if I get collided with. It's my fault for not predicting it and doing something about it before it happens. These are points I'm trying to make. Um, Hippodrome is a super guy. And he's, I, I, love, I love the guy in the comments and he supports everybody. And he's a great channel to follow. He, he does everything on his bikes and... He goes off racing, down tracks, he goes off-roading. You've got to watch him. And he's, he, he's an experienced biker. And he, he didn't fully understand my point. And I understand his point as well in relation to... It isn't our fault to get knocked off. If, even if it, somebody knocks you off on the side and goes into the back of you. Of course it's not. But what I'm saying is, you can do more. And you can predict things that I didn't predict, this guy in the left hand there, and that's why I'm annoyed at myself, and I put myself in a situation, I didn't weigh things up, I was trapped in the left hand lane, and when I really had been better off lane two or three, or even four, it's just one of these little things, 
you've got to think and you've got to predict traffic behavior, predict everything. And you've just got to be a mind reader if you want to survive and always try to better yourself. And that's what I'm always trying to do. I've been doing it for 30 odd years and I'm still learning. Nobody knows it all. And as much as I've got a channel that says the riding guy does, it's all about defensive riding. I do other stuff, of course, and I have bench riding stuff now as well, but my core beauty, as far as my channel is concerned, is defensive riding and sharing these tips and just getting people to think a little bit more out of the box so they survive. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, if you've not seen my channel before, thanks for visiting today. Consider subscribing. I much appreciate the views. Share my riding my defensive riding tips and experiences amongst your biking friends. It doesn't matter how much experience you've got, like me. Just still keep learning. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Take care. Ride safe.